Welcome to King Leo D&D. My name is Daniel, and this video is going to be focusing on a skill that I think that will be really helpful for somebody who's about to DM for the first time. It is a very common question for somebody who feels pushed into the role, trying to invite people in and start their first game. They want to know, am I ready? What do I have to do? How does this work? How do I practice? How do I know if I can do this? What's the best first step to getting started? And so I will not say that this is 100% the best. You have to do this. I don't think that this is the only way to be a good DM, but I think that this is going to be a way for you to test stuff out, figure it out, try it on your own and develop your own style. So what this looks like is going to be running simulations by yourself on a bunch of different elements of the game, testing things out, running them through in your mind when you have free time and seeing what you like and what you don't like about what you're doing. I'm going to flesh this out, walk through a couple of steps and ways that this can look like for different parts of dungeon mastering. The first is going to be combat. Almost every D&D session has some kind of encounter where the players are fighting monsters. I think this is especially true for the newest players, but every table and campaign is different. It is often the case for that very first session for brand new players to come together. They want to try their hand at combat. It's a very vital part to D&D, and so we want to see it. We've built characters with these skills and abilities, so let's try it out in session one and see how it goes. And so combat has a bunch of rules and things that you need to know and be ready for. So you might have some guides and papers and things to tell you which dice go where, uh, but I think running some combat by yourself first and to prepare for that session could help you not be so surprised in that first session when things happen. So some steps that might be useful here is to pick a monster type that you think your party will run into pretty early. Or if you already know exactly what that first combat is going to be because you're creating this scene and you're running this first session, run that. Set up that scene on paper, in your mind, with miniatures, however you will in the session, and then walk through that for each step. For this example, I'm gonna be using a couple people in combat as player characters and three wolves. Wolves seem to be one of those go-to, let's start. It's always like wolves or goblins, so let's give this a go. The first thing I want you to try to practice doing with this scene in your head is to just describe. Describe the scene and the monsters. How do they look when the party approaches? Are they defensive? Are they protecting something? Or are they growling and preparing an attack on the party? Is it raining and their wet fur is matted to their bodies? What are the important parts to lay out of the scene? What does that look like? What can help your players get immersed into the place that you are taking them? Next, think through initiative. You roll initiative out, get used to how long that can take for three wolves, for your different players of your party, how you want to roll separate initiative for three, then add their dexterity modifier. You can even write these numbers down and then use them for your actual campaign combat later to save you time. And then roll for the PCs and then set up the turn order, get, get your battle scene set up and then play it out. That's the next step. It can increase your familiarity with it to then go through each of your players' turns. What are they likely to do? What abilities will they use? If the players or monsters need to move, then now you get to think through how far apart are they at the start of this combat? The average movement speed of a character is 30 feet. So do you want them to be able to move and hit the wolf in the same turn? Or do you want them some space so that there's a, there's a moment in the battle where they're charging each other and they don't quite get to attack yet, but they're preparing? Each of those has a different feel to the combat. So what, what do you want that to go through? What do you want your players to be able to do? Then think about the different actions and bonus actions each player can take and then roll them out. Practice the attack rolls, adding the appropriate strength or dexterity modifier, proficiency scores, bonuses, and then the d20 roll to see if it meets or is higher than the armor class of the wolf. If it does, roll the damage and add the appropriate strength or dexterity modifier to the damage. 
And also notice this is such a key part. I remembered struggling with this really hard the first time I was playing. Uh, notice that the proficiency modifier is added to the attack rolls to see if something hits, but not the damage rolls to see how much you hurt the target. Proficiency is used to see if it was a skillful attack, but does not affect the amount of damage that is done. After that, you can then practice describing a successful hit on the wolves. How do the wolves respond to being wounded? Are they fueled to fight more, or do they whimper and retreat? Push as far into the combat as you wish, repeating the actions and movements for all of the parts and see how it goes. Did anything confuse you? Did you have to look anything up and double check? It isn't the goal to memorize the entire stat block of the wolves or your players. That may, may come with time. But even then, it is better to have these in an easy place to reference, like a notebook or a DM screen, so that you do not forget or misremember anything and then make a call that was just inaccurate for the sake of trying to speed things up. If this is your first time running a combat scenario, walk through the steps ahead of time. It will help you be more prepared when it is happening live in front of your players. The next area of DMing that you can simulate is describing the areas the players will be exploring. A massive portion of DMing is talking about the world around the players. What do they sense? What fills the space? DMs all have different styles of doing this and details that they think are important and a level of depth that they think is appropriate for the campaign. For me, if it is my player's first time in a particular environment, I may spend a lot more time describing details like the trees, the moisture level of the earth, any flowers, insects, sounds that they may see or hear for the first time. But once we have explored that space a couple of times, or they are just traveling through it again, I am much more likely to give a brief description and may even say something to the effect of, these familiar woods are a welcome sight, and with your prior experience, walking through these paths are no trouble at all instead of drawing out a longer traveling sequence. I will do a more in-depth post on things to consider when describing the environment, but for you now, just think through the scene ahead of time. What time of day it is, what are the points of interest to the area, think through the scenes and what each player is likely to notice about the space. You can have a list of words written down that might help you as you are improvising too. An example of this might be a list of synonyms for the word cold if your characters will be exploring a frigid region for a while. Then, just practice describing that region that you are exploring. Describe the same place a couple of different times and see what sounds good to you. If you come across phrases or descriptions you really like, you can write them down and use them in the game. Not everything has to be improvised, and it is okay to still have scripted moments to help make sure that you set the scene exactly how you want it to go. The next area I'm going to talk about are character interactions. This is the last one, and this is a great place to rehearse. Role-playing and speaking in character can be a tricky part to starting a role-playing game like Dungeons & Dragons. It isn't natural for everyone, and there can be a tendency to just gloss over in-character parts just to describe in third person what is happening. So, instead of speaking as a shopkeep, a DM might say, Fred the blacksmith says he can sell you a new sword for six silver pieces, do you want to buy it? And then the player responds yes, and then the interaction with the blacksmith is over. Let me say this first. It is entirely acceptable and enjoyable for an interaction like this for many players and DMs. This could be exactly what everyone wants, and I am confident in saying, if this meets the expectations of everyone at the table, do not feel any pressure to perform differently. More on that later though. I want to show you how you can practice staying in character as your non-player characters or your NPCs and what that might look like. First, and you will notice that this is the first step in all of the categories I've already talked about, practice describing the room, the NPC, and what else is there. If they're entering a blacksmith shop, how is the shop arranged? Can they hear the smith actively working now? Are there other customers already there? Then think about the features of the blacksmith and what the players are likely to notice first about their appearance, their posture, their expression, etc. Go over the description of the smith and their shop a couple times in your head until you are comfortable with it. Then, after you feel good about that, think about the personality and word choice of the smith when they greet the party. If you're interested in making NPCs unique and a lively part of your campaign, then imagine how you can give this blacksmith some layers. Options here are voices, word choice, your own facial expressions and eye contact, other physical factors, and personality. 
Is the blacksmith rushed or trying to get down to business? Or are they needing business so they are extra kind and welcoming? One way I keep myself sane is to not always go over the top with unique voices and characteristics for every NPC. Even if they are vital and spend a long time with the party, sometimes it's just as useful to have a default voice that sounds and appears different than my normal speaking DM voice. This allows me to stay in character easily, and my players will know when I'm speaking as the NPC, and there's not a lot of confusion about who is speaking when. And so that has been as simple for me as a different facial expression or posture. If I'm sitting straight up and looking at them, and maybe I'm speaking a little slower, and I ask them a question, and they know that's coming from the NPC, where if I'm back like this and I'm talking like how I have been in this video again, they know this is me asking them a question and checking in with them about something. And so just having a subtle difference that your players can pick up on might just be your easier check the box, I'm an NPC voice right now, and that is great. And that can be such a helpful tool just to separate and distinguish your DM self versus your players and your NPCs. After you've solidified some personality to this character, practice talking as them, either in your head or out loud. Think about how they might haggle, agree to a deal, sternly look at a player if they insult him with a low price, and any other things that you expect your players might do. If you have these in your back pocket, improvising the scene will not feel as hefty. You'll be prepared, you'll be ready, you've done this before. In conclusion, at the end of the day, if you have been able to run through these scenes in your mind a couple of times, they're going to feel more familiar. The goal will be to build that familiarity and regularity and give yourself something to rely on rather than going in blind. If you find yourself getting stuck on descriptions or running out of ways to expand on your skills, I highly suggest listen to some podcasts of some other live play games. You can also practice by describing scenes in movies that you are watching in your head and trying to be succinct yet still cover the details. As you are watching it, just pick up on the things that set the scene and just work on, how would I say that? If this were a scene I'd be looking at in game, how do those trees look? Where are the shadows? What does that person's face look like? What is their posture? And if you're describing things that you see in the world in this way, you're practicing, you're working that out. You'll find your groove over time but running through the scenes in combat in this way is a great place to start. As always, thanks for coming by. Thanks for checking us out.